Hey friend, welcome to my channel, Kareen Alude, where we talk about everything and I'm Kareen Alude. Please be sure to like, subscribe, turn on your notification bell so you can always know when I post a new upload. Now let's get into this video. So this book I've been reading again is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. This is not a financial advice video. This is definitely a video on how to change your state of mind so that you can attract money to yourself. And it's a it's simple law, it's a simple rule. This is a book club video also but slash finance but I definitely have some highlight highlighted notes that I wanted to uh, talk to you guys about that I wanted to make sure the key points on just how we talk simple things just based on how we talk can either repel money or success from us or attract it first rule change how you talk change how you talk about money your relationship with money a lot of people have a negative uh speech when it comes to money negative talk where in the book this is the quote he says for example one dad had a habit of saying i can afford it the other dad forbade those words to be used he insisted i asked how can i afford it one is a statement and the other is a question one lets you off the hook and the other forces you to think my soon to be rich dad would explain that by automatically saying the words, I can't afford it, your brain stops working. By asking the question, how can I afford it? Your brain is put to work. He believed that automatically saying I can't afford it was a sign of mental laziness. And this is where I agree. All my life, I didn't used to have this state of mind of how can I afford something, but I knew I wanted this luxurious, comfortable life. And instead, the only thing I thought was, okay, how can I get the life I want is, of course, go to school, get a degree, do this, blah, 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 right? So I knew the steps for that, but I saw people with degrees <laughs> and they would still talk like they couldn't afford this. If I'd be like, you know, one thing my dad used to say, bless his soul, you know, it wasn't his intention and he always provided for us, but he used to talk like that when I'd be like, can we go to the movies to go see this movie? We'd always wait till the movie came out on Blockbuster. We'd never like go to the theaters to see anything because it was penny pinching. We're immigrant kids, much like Robert, you know, we're immigrant kids that didn't understand why in our life in Haiti we had so much we really did we had a lot more and then we were here with my dad penny pinching like he used to always say this thing that only rich people have the time to go to movies I don't got time for that they said in Creole <laughs> literally translated those are things for people who have money certain luxuries like going to a restaurant a fancy restaurant or even the movies were seen as a rich people thing and which was not true but it was his way of saying responsibility first over pleasure so I was more especially in the Haitian community kids are are born more to be responsible and, oh, and over choosing pleasure it's more like i got this bill that bill and i can't see myself um, living this luxurious life or making these decisions that's gonna like you know not be good for me financially so as i got older as i got older and i started being around a different circle of people you know that uh thought differently too where it was like dang i really want this car like one of my friends really wanted a range rover and he said it was really his dream car and i i was like yeah just get it you know i was like it's like ah, i can't yet afford it but i'm gonna figure out how i'm gonna get it he literally said that before I even read this book, he said that and he's one of the most successful friends I have. OK, uh, him and his wife, very, they're very, they want something, they go after it. And I give them props for that, both of them. He was the first person to say the whole statement. I'm going to figure out how I'm going to afford it. And literally he has like three, four different companies and, and, and doing different, you know, like just making his own money, not working for anybody, doing all of this, has his wagons, Range Rovers, all of this stuff. And it's like, okay and he did make his mind work and he eventually got everything that he said he would have so i had this mentality of when i started working for 3d financial i first started as just a secretary okay i wasn't done with school yet <laughs> i didn't even have my associate's degree but i started as a secretary but i knew that I, you know i don't want to be in any position for too long i want to keep elevating in life because there are things that i want to afford i wanted to at the time get into a, a, a safer luxury apartment i didn't want to because at the time you know i was living alone and stuff like that and i wanted to feel safe i wanted to feel secured and i knew what i was getting paid as a secretary was not enough so i was like how am i gonna move up or prove myself to them 
for them to not just give me a raise, but see me as like an asset in this company. And I made my mind work. I started as a secretary implementing dress codes and all of that, yes. <laughs> and changing up the office and things like that to the point where I was uh, promoted to office administrator and then office manager, etc. And then even then that wasn't enough for me because then I had new goals and I was like, hey, now I want my first, I always wanted a little Mercedes Benz, you know, the little CLA 250 type, you know, cars. I was like, I just want a cute little Mercedes Benz and I, I don't think I can afford it with this salary. So I was like, I need to do something else. And so I started, you know, teaching myself and asking questions from my other boss. It's two of them, the COO and the CEO. And I, I asked him to teach me how to basically do credit repair. I want to be able to do that. I want to take on that responsibility in the office too and be like the main credit repair uh, specialist. And I learned a system and I definitely helped a lot of people purchase their first homes, et cetera, finance their cars. And it just was uphill from that. That's when I discovered that when you want something, don't tell yourself, I can't afford it. Or I don't know, that'll never happen for me. I don't even know how that's gonna happen. Say instead, how can I make this happen? What can I do to make this happen? How can I reach the ultimate success? How can I apply myself, you know? And I learned this, that anything I want, I can get in this life. Anything you want, you can get if you apply yourself and it aligns with the, with the will of God, you know what I mean? But God rewards those who really do the work and who make their brain think. Don't ever get too lazy and just dismiss, like, because it looks so tough, like, ah, I'll never have my dream home. I'll never have my dream car. I'm not saying everybody needs to be a millionaire. Everybody needs to. A lot of people don't want that. I know a lot of millionaires that wish they were just regular people. Like they very depressed by it. Not everybody wants that life. Some people want a comfortable life with comfortable money and stuff. But no one wants to be poor. No one wants to be homeless. No one wants to be struggling for food. You know what I mean? But if you give up, the mind is the most powerful muscle. If you give up up here, everything else in your life will align and you will notice that you you gave up on everything else you know what i mean so never give up off here and i i love that asset another thing he said is one dad said the reason i'm not rich is because i have kids the other said the reason i must be rich is because i have kids that sat with me because a lot of us how many times we've heard our parents say i don't have my dream body because of these kids i don't have my dream car because of these kids i have to put food i have to da 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 versus parents that's like yo i want my kids in the best schools i want my kids to not have to work through college and just have a good life i want to look my best so i'm gonna go to the gym i'm gonna do the work that requires me to have my dream body even if it's five minutes at the house to do crunches and and it's you don't need kids to monitor portion control so stop blaming your kids about portion control i know there's other hormonal issues um why some women cannot lose the weight but it's as simple as, you know, going to your doctor checkups and things like that, fixing your hormonal imbalances and, you know, figuring out ways. There's a lot of people, when I lived in the hood, I lived in Orange Center, okay? You know, it was very hood. But there was a lot of our neighbors that had their own garden in the backyard. A lot of them, okay? And they started with small little seeds from Walmart squash lemons i had a lemon orange tree i had strawberries i was growing in the backyard we had green beans i was growing in the back like me and my sister at our small age we had green thumbs in our backyard in the hood we grow our own food to eat right and i never had health issues when i was young until i got older had a little money was buying out all the time you know what i mean but poverty is a state of mind it's it's not it doesn't have to be a reality you you don't need to be rich to eat right to live right to make something better of yourself and stop using excuses uh to hold you back instead use those setbacks to propel you to push you don't say these kids or these things is the reason why i'm not where i'm i want to be you know what i mean but instead say because of this i have to make it like i always said when my mom passed away i have to make her proud that's where the allude come from that's my mom's name that's not my real name i adopted it my name is kareen but the allude is my mom's name 
name and I want her name to live on and that was always my dream as a kid and I didn't know how it was gonna happen but I knew it was gonna happen and I knew the only way it would is to apply myself keep learning the skills that I need even when I try to learn new languages it's for future opportunities you never know so never stop applying yourself because of your circumstances one said when it comes to money play it safe don't take risks the other said learn to manage risk everything is a risk in life me doing YouTube was a risk a risk of being rejected not being liked, people disagreeing with you the possibility of being canceled other youtubers you know beefs and all this stuff like I, I saw I'm a I would say I'm a risk analysis, <laughs> especially when you work in like um, uh, finance, accounting and stuff. If you have a brain that's very technical and, and you assess every risk and, and you know, you're very, you can be robotic. Like when I was doing credit repair, I was almost robotic, you know, with everything I do. So you understand risk, but I knew that if I kept thinking about all of these things, it was, I was never going to do it. And I had to initially tell myself that no matter how it goes, if I'm rejected or not, I'm doing it because I love it. And I, and I want to do things that I'm proud of. Even if it's slow success, I saw this quote that said, slow success builds character fast success fast success builds ego and i used to always be like i'd, I'd rather grow slowly on youtube i don't want to be one of those people that make money so fast so quick I have so much people recognizing you that it overwhelms me and i quit so there's risks to everything you if you keep uh holding yourself back because of the fear of failure you're just going to be held back so in 2022 remember that um even if you're watching this 2025 2028 2030 2060 2080 there will be risk in everything and you have to grab them by the horns and be like i'm willing to stick to it do what i have to do to make it the next one is he would often say i've worked hard for the government and i'm entitled to these benefits the other believed in total financial self-reliance he spoke against the entitlement mentality and how it created weak and financially needy people so that goes into my the second step stop expecting a handout you know i know there's a lot of people as being a child of immigrants um being an immigrant here when my dad was a professor in haiti my uncles owned their own schools um we came from wealth in haiti i'll say that i didn't know the poverty until i came to america and was seeing on tv poverty i didn't know what it looked like in Haiti that was just us okay but my dad one thing that always sucked to me that he did do right we never went on financial assistance even in our worst because it's like I will not grow a dependency on a system you know and I know that some people need it like I've, I've been like single mothers for instance God bless their souls you know and even single fathers my dad was a single father forever and I thought we needed it you know but he always figured out a way to make it work and we stretched things and he climbed his way up. He climbed his way all the way up. But a lot of people expect so much from their government, like not just that, but they expect so much from whether it's parents. I, I'm sorry to say your parents do bring you up here, but they won't be living forever. They won't be there. That's why we have a lot of cases where we see these kids in 2021 that took the lives of their mothers, especially that one lady. I forgot her name, but maybe she rest in peace because that really touched me. But she was the one supporting her, her son. She was, I think, a millionaire. It was a black African woman. I'm not sure if you know the story, please comment below but her son took her life because she cut him off and was like you need to get a job so there's all this entitled everybody wants to make money the easy way want to be a social influencer a rapper and this and i support creativity do it go for it you know but at the same time even when I started YouTube, I didn't just quit my job. I didn't just feel entitled to a certain amount of subscribers, money and all this. I'm like, yo, I know, I know what it is. Let me be patient. No one owes me anything, not the government. No longer my parents, because I'm an adult. I left their home. Like, you know, no one owes me anything. And that mentality of always waiting for a handout will cripple you. If someone's always carrying you, it will cripple you and your brain will become lazy. You will never, no longer think on how you can make money for yourself. And you don't want to be crippled in that way. The other one was one dad taught me how to write an impressive resume so I could find a good job. The other taught me how to write strong business and financial plans so I could create jobs. This is where it goes with not expecting a handout, you know? think of how can I create my own business and not everyone has the aptitude to have their own business I understand that some people are okay with just being like 
the the charge nurse or the ceo of not the ceo the 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 office manager this that and that to them that is enough and so this video is in no means to encourage everyone to have a business everybody can't be a business owner because we all will need employees you know what i mean but at the same time I like this mentality for those who aim for that is stop worrying about how to make a strong resume and more focus on how to create business plans. Do you know a lot of people want to start businesses, but this is why I, you know, went into the business field because how, do you know how to write a business plan? Do you know how to market your business plan? Do you know how to even determine a target audience and all of those questions that a lot of people have the idea but don't go learn how to really maintain it. And so if you have your kids, start them off young, start them off young, teach them that, hey, you're gonna need a business plan. You're gonna need um, to understand what's your mission statement. All of those things are very important instead of just, oh, put this on your resume. Here's how you can trick this and here's where to look to to go find the best jobs it's always best to always have your own and it says i notice that people really do shape their lives through their thoughts for example my poor dad always said i'll never be rich and the prophecy became reality my rich dad on the other hand always referred to himself as rich he would say things like i'm a rich man and rich people don't do this yes uh, i always said i i i'm broke but i'm not poor right and you live like you're rich and living like you're rich People have the misconception living like you're rich means riding around in nice cars, being in a big house. Being, Although I have helped several people get their homes, purchase their first homes, I still have yet to purchase my first home yet, right? Right? And a lot of people say, well, that's dumb, that's this, that's that, or whatever. And believe it or not, I, I, I have the money to. I have the money to do a lot, but I'm like, that if your home is your biggest investment you already got it wrong because <laughs> property value goes down like you guys there's so much but i'm not gonna do all of this in this video right my thing is every money that i have now that i'm saving is going into businesses once i i'm at a point where like i don't i'm not relying on one source of income what's the quote i saw i think i was watching an adrian bylon video all things adrian she was talking about finance and she was like she always somebody commented if you can't buy something twice don't buy it like if i can't buy a house twice i'm not ready to purchase it if i can't buy this car twice i'm not ready to purchase it and that is the rule of thumb even when you go to an apartment they make sure you make three times the rent before they can give it to you right so it's the same thing with that so living rich is not about materials okay living rich is a mind state rich people don't think like this rich people don't flaunt a lot of rich people are scared to flaunt their wealth because they know that comes with a lot of envy that comes with a lot of you know the ones who do are the nouveau rich or the rich that don't know how to properly manage their money <laughs> i've seen uh, a lot of uh super rich like i'm subscribed to a lot of channels that break down finance and uh the rich lifestyle and the richest people around the world and i'm not going to say which country this guy is from but he's one of, i think he's in the top 10 richest men in the world and he squandered his money to the point where the country the state literally had to like okay no more no more no more <laughs> there's a lot of rich people that don't know how to manage money that are reckless that don't know investments and things so the people that have the rich mindset is not about like flash it's not about birkin bags it's not about um you know louis v or Yves Saint Laurent, but it's not about that, okay? It's literally about having the mentality of solidifying your wealth. And I don't want anyone to uh, misconstrue the rich mentality with materialistic goods, if that makes sense. There is a difference between being poor and being broke. Broke is temporary, poor is eternal. This is a fact, this is a fact. The power of our thoughts may be measured or appreciated, but it becomes obvious to me as a young boy, this is him talking, that it was important to be aware of my thoughts and how I expressed myself. I noticed that my poor dad was poor, not because of the amount of money he earned, which was significant, but because of his thoughts and actions. As a young boy having two fathers, I became acutely aware of being careful about which thoughts I chose to adopt as my own. Should I listen to my rich dad or to my poor dad? Like I said, change how you think. Everything is the mind. 
change how you see things, your perspective, which is what he's saying. It's like, yo, at a young age, he realized how you talk is everything. I've made so many videos on positive self-talk, even to yourself. Like, I, I, I believe in, in your state of being, like looking at yourself even. Women, I always tell you guys that, love yourself, people say that but don't really know how to put it in practice it all starts with what you say to yourself even in quiet even if you're not verbalizing out loud your thoughts if you're constantly thinking i'm fat i'm ugly i'm undesirable i'm this your body will obey your body will obey whatever you tell it okay and you will start to see you just keep gaining the weight you just keep right losing the hair and not caring much and then people can see that and that you have low sense of self of worth or self-esteem and 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 you really repel people so your body will obey whatever you say so please be careful of your speech in 2022 I think Robert Green and Robert Kiyosaki is different definitely the two Roberts <laughs> in my life that I'm like oh man I would love to meet them before I die uh, they're the two Roberts I, I don't know maybe I know my son Robert it's good luck but the last bonus point that I give and I highlighted this part before we get to chapter one is money is one form of power but what is more powerful is financial education money comes and goes but if you have the education about how money works you can you gain power over and can begin building wealth. The reason positive thinking alone does not work is because most people went to school and never learned how money works. So they spend their life working for money. So I'll leave this with that. If you want me to go further into that next video, comment below. But it's not always enough just to think. That's why I say do the work. Like know a business plan. How do you know how to write a business plan? You know, and things like that. Because positive thinking alone and saying what you're gonna do and being optimistic. A lot of people buy his books a lot of people I've had friends we talk about success and they're always so excited and like this is what I'm gonna do and then when time comes they waste their whole day doing nothing to propel them towards this goal that they have they're not buying books on their subject and reading instead it's just mindlessly scrolling through social media or you know other things like that and it's like what happened to all this excitement that you had this uh, savoir vivre that you had that you want to uh, uh um that you want to be this and be that what happened what happened but a lot of people know how to just talk and not really put into action and learning financial education from reputable sources is good like i always say in his book does he teach you exactly step by step how you as an individual need to make money i don't think so because everybody has different paths but the tools are here to spark that to make you start to think and a lot of people want the the want it spelled out for them step by step what to do that is called mental laziness so get financial education watch those boring lectures and videos <laughs> and actually take notes it's not boring when you actually know you're going to apply yourself it's not boring when you actually this is what you want okay start young start young don't wait till you're 30 one of my biggest regrets in life and i don't have much is that i waited so long before starting to save money to and not just to save money to leave it in my savings but to reinvest to make my money work for me multiply i hate that i started young but nonetheless i'm not old <laughs> or that old to start now so if you're watching this video it doesn't matter what age you are it's never too late there are people in their 50s 60s and even 70s and 80s that's you know strike it and become a, uh, who they always wanted to be it's never too late get the education change the way you think be more positive and definitely watch your speech patterns i love you guys so much thank you for tuning in as always comment below what other videos would you guys like until next time Mwah.